I think the most important lesson of this year is it's really taught us how fragile the world economy now is. As a result of the financial crisis, it means that growth is really quite weak. So if any shock comes along and hits activity, that tends to push the economy quite quickly towards recession or even into recession. The other thing it's taught us really is that central banks can't do much about it. And so we're much more dependent on fiscal policy and that means we're more dependent on politicians. So it's, it's become a lot more fragile and a lot more political. 2011 has taught us that we really can't rely on a multiple of politicians to come together uh, and come up with a solution to any sort of major crisis, especially if they have opposing views on how that solution can be put together. For example, through the European debt crisis, we've seen Spanish, Italian politicians really push against any kind of solution that would cause them to undertake severe austerity measures. On the other hand, we've seen countries like Germany and Austria and the Netherlands try to push for even more austerity from the debt crisis-ridden countries. And that's because they're the ones who have to foot the bill for the bailouts at the end of the day. So it's this type of conflict that means that we struggle to see crisis resolution. The prospects for global growth in 2012 are looking a bit bleak at the moment. It really looks as though we're facing another year of slowdown. That is primarily being driven by the Eurozone, which we believe now will be in recession for 2012. And that in turn is coming from the crisis that we see in the European area. It's coming as a result of the credit crunch that's building and the lack of confidence that's building and the fiscal tightening. Those factors are really slowing down the Eurozone very rapidly and we can already see from the indicators that the Eurozone is probably heading into recession already. Eurozone in recession has a big effect on the rest of the world. It's a quarter of global GDP and it means that exports to the Eurozone slow down. It also means that the, tra the, the finance flows, the banking sector flows also slow down as well. So we can see that Asia and emerging markets will slow down. They have a lot of trade with Europe and also the United States as well is going to be weaker. So as a result of this, we think that global growth will actually slow down in 2012. The key risks to global economic recovery are, again, from the Eurozone. The Eurozone outcome, although we've got quite a bleak outcome, it could be even worse. There is a risk that the Eurozone breaks up um, and countries actually move back to their original currencies. And that would really have a catastrophic effect on global activity. It would mean a real collapse in output in the Eurozone and, of course, a much bigger impact to the rest of the world. We've become quite pessimistic about the uh, European debt crisis um, going forward. We're already seeing the early signs of a credit crunch now developing within uh, the Eurozone. We can see that uh, a number of large banks are now struggling to raise finances from capital markets and are now heavily reliant on the European Central Bank for liquidity measures. Given what uh, we've said about the uh, inability of politicians to come up with a, a solution that gets ahead of the problem, we do think now that we will see a credit crunch evolving within the Eurozone into next year. Now that will mean quite a severe recession within the majority uh, of the Eurozone. Although ultimately we think that once countries like France begin to get into trouble, uh, eventually the European Central Bank will undertake quantitative easing, despite opposition um, from Germany. I think the other risk that we face uh, in 2012 is really on US fiscal policy. US fiscal policy is set to contract next year unless the Congress can agree to offset that by extending some of the tax cuts from this year. The problem is that politicians in the US are very divided. The Republicans will not allow any tax increases at all and the Democrats are not really prepared to allow for more fiscal stimulus unless they have some tax increases and that is really a problem. So it could be that we end up with a much bigger fiscal tightening in the US next year than people expect and again that would be uh, bad for growth. In the UK there is further tightening is planned with cuts in public expenditure. The fiscal headwind probably won't be quite as strong as it has been this year because the VAT increase that came in this year is not going to be repeated again. So the hit to the household sector is actually going to be a bit less uh, for the UK this year. The other point to mention on the UK is that inflation will come down quite sharply next year. And that's actually a benefit to everywhere in the world. We should see inflation falling around the world.
the world as commodity prices appear to have peaked and a lot of the tax increases that were put through this year will drop out. So that should actually help the consumer quite a bit and it's one of the bright spots I think that we've got for 2012. We don't expect a hard landing in China. We do believe that the Chinese economy is slowing, that's certainly true. And the property market is really beginning to come off the boil now. The thing is, of course, these are things that the Chinese authorities want to see. This has been the whole purpose of the tightening of policy. They really needed to slow down the, the property market, particularly at the top end, and that policy is now beginning to work. It may be that the property market at the top end does slow down more sharply than we think and we get some sort of hard landing there. The advantage though that China has is it still has quite a lot of levers that it can pull in order to support activity elsewhere. So even in the housing market there are plans to increase the construction of mass public housing for uh, the main majority of people in China. So that could provide an offset to a slowdown in the top end of the market. So we still think the Chinese authorities can manage this quite well, but we will see a slowdown. But I think GDP should still be above 7% growth in 2012, rather than the hard landing that some people are worrying about where growth could fall to 5 or 6%. I think there are two things that investors will continue to focus on. The first one is the search for yield. The outlook that we have is for interest rates to remain very low and no increases in interest rates in the UK, in the Eurozone or the US in 2012. So these very low cash rates are going to persist. That means that investors are going to continue to look for yield and I think they will find it in a couple of places. The first place will be in the credit markets, particularly the high yield credit markets. It means taking a bit more risk and investing in companies that are lower rated, but they are paying 7 or 8% at the moment. The second area is within the equity markets, and this is really where you've got to be quite selective, but there are a number of companies that are very high quality, that have a good record of paying dividends and should continue to do so, even though next year will be quite difficult for growth. So we think that in equities and in credit, there should be some good opportunities for investors.